Hinondo boko sikaye aramaka sikataye. Hilando roboko sikata namaka sikata. Why don't we begin to worship him? Why don't we begin to just praise his name in the name of Jesus? Hikando roboko sikaye aramaka sikotoa. In the name of Jesus, we worship you, God. Hikando roboko sikata namaka sikata. Whatever you want to say. Say this day, O oh Lord God, that so be it, Father. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Hikaye Aramaka Sikataye, Irobo Kosikata Namaka Sikarobo Kosotoa, Hilando Robo Kosikata Namaka Sikata. I submit myself, O oh Lord God, to you. I submit myself, O oh Lord God. Hikando Robo Kosikata Namaka Sikorobo Kosoto. Father, if there's anything, O Lord God, that is separating myself from you, O Lord God, I lay it down before you, Father. In the name of Jesus, if I committed any sort of sin, Father, forgive me, Father. In the name of Jesus, Hikondo Robo Kosikaya, Hilando Robo Kosikata. Why don't we walk into a bit of repentance right now? In the name of Jesus, Hikando Robo Kosoto, Hinando Robo in the name of Jesus, Father, forgive me, O Lord God, for me walking in my own will. Father, forgive me, O Lord Jesus, when I decided to turn away from you, O Lord God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I can feel your love in this place. We feel your love, O oh Lord God, in this place. I thank you, Father, for forgiving us, O oh Lord God. Would you receive his forgiveness this morning? Would you forgive yourself as well in the name of Jesus? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you're holding on to any sort of way, would you let it go and leave it in the hands of God this morning? I release it unto you, O Lord God. I release these responsibilities that I've taken on myself, O Lord Jesus, to leave in your hands, Father. I leave it all in your hands, O Lord God, so that I may be able to see your grace, O Lord God, flow this morning. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I cast my cares to you, O Lord God. I cast my cares, O Lord God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I cast my cares to Hilala boko shikara mai arabo ko shikata. Hinando ora mai e arabakasi. Hiloro boko shikata na makasi koro boko soto. God, I loosen peace in this place. God, I loosen your peace, O Lord God, to flow in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hikara makasi kata. Hikara maka shikata ye arobo ko shikata. Hikaro boko shikata ye arobo ko shikata. Father, get personal with us, Lord God. Search my heart, Father. If there be any wicked thing, Lord God, that is within me, Lord Jesus. Renew a right spirit within me, God. Hikaro boko shikata ye arabaka shikata. Would you allow God to search the innermost parts of yourself right now in the name of Jesus? 
Anything that is wicked, Father, anything that is not of you, O Lord God, I submit it to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. And I'm asking you, O Lord God, to help me, O Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Search me, God. Search my heart, Father. Any sort of bad motives, God, that are not of you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Renew my mind, O Lord God. Renew my mind, Father, in the name of Jesus. Help me to see the way that you need me to see, Father. Help me to see the way that you see it, God. Help me to see my problems, O Lord God, the way that you see them. In the name of Jesus. Ilando robo kosi kataye robo kosoto ilalaba kaye araba kasi kata search me God he kando robo kosi kata namakasi korobo kosoto ilanda namaye araba kasi kaye araba kasi kata ilando robo kosi kataye ilando robo kosi kataye araba kasi kata. Hilalaye alamaye aramakasoto ramakasikata. Leave it at his feet. Leave it at his feet in the name of Jesus. Ikondo ramasikaye aramakasi robokosoto. Ilando robokosikata namakasikata. Ilando robokosikara makasikaye aramakasikoto. Ilo robo ka li alama ka i robo ko shikata. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I kando robo ko shikata ye arama kasata. Ilala ba ye arama ko robo ko shikata. Father, you set the tone in this place. Father, I allow you, O Lord God, to set the tone in this place. I kando robo ko shikai ye arama. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I your spirit is so gentle, oh Lord God. He kando robo koshi kataya robo kosotoa. He kando robo koshi kataye. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, that's it. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Father, I loosen your grace upon the body right now in the name of Jesus. Hikara makai arobo kosi katai arabo kosoto Hikara bakasi korobo kosi kata Hikai arobo kosi kara bakasi korobo kosoto Hikara makasi kai arobo kora mai arobo kosi kata Hikai arobo kosi katai arabo kosi kata she korama she robo she karama kasikata she karama kasikata raba kasikata rama kasikata he karobo kosikata yarobo kosikata come on god is setting things in motion right now he's setting things in motion right now in the name of jesus he karobo kosikata raba kasikata soften our hearts god soften our hearts father he kando robo kosikata yarama kasikata he lono robo kosikai yarama kasikoto he robo sikan Dana Marama Sikata 
Would you begin to pray God's perfect will in this place? Would you begin to pray God's perfect will in this region in the name of Jesus? God, we loosen your perfect will, the Lord God, to manifest. We pray your kingdom, the Lord God, to have its way in the name of Jesus. We bind blindness in the name of Jesus and we loose sight upon your body, O Lord God, to receive your word, O Lord God, to receive direction in the name of Jesus. That's it. Why don't we press a little bit in the spirit? Why don't we get to press a little bit in the spirit? Iramando boko si karamaka si kata. Ikando roboko si kata ye roboko soto. Why don't you begin to speak out their name and start praying for them uh, in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray your grace upon the Marines, Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, that your perfect will, the Lord God, would abide with them uh, in the name of Jesus, uh, that your truth, the Lord God, would flow through them uh, in the name of Jesus, that they would be attracted to their spirits uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Ikando roboko si katarama kasi kata. Iroboko sotoa. Iramando boko si kataye. In the name of Jesus. Come on, he's setting things in order right now in the name of Jesus. We bind the lies of the enemy right now in the name of Jesus. Iramando boko si kata roboko si kata. Hilando roboko si kata namaka si kata. We exercise dominion and authority in the name of Jesus. Iramako sotoa. Iramando boko si kata ye. Hilando roboko si kata namaka si karoboko soto. May your quickening be upon the body in the name of Jesus to respond to Lord God whenever you speak, to respond to Lord God whenever there's a push in the name of Jesus. Let it not only be for our church, but let it be for the whole body of Christ in the name of Jesus. This day in the name of Jesus. This day in the name of Jesus. Iramako soto ata. Iramando roboko si kataye roboko soto. Hilando roboko si kaye arabaka si kataye. Hilalalabaka si kataye. Hilando roboko si kataye. That's it in the name of Jesus. I feel like God is giving us rhema right now to speak in the name of Jesus. Would you begin to yield to that in the name of Jesus right now? Hilanda <laughs> Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Why don't we begin to continue to pray in the spirit? 
and allow the Spirit of God to guide us into whatever he wants to do next. In the name of Jesus. Guide us, Father. Guide us, O Lord God. If you have the Holy Ghost, why don't you begin to speak in refreshing tongues right now? In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Shikai Robo Kushikata. Ika Baha Yorobo Sabaka Yedebo Shabahai. Ila Baha Yedele Baha Yedebo Sutu. Come on, let's step into this spirit. Let's step into this realm in the spirit in prayer. Ida Baha Yorodia da 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 Baha Satae Wokuka Mahasae. That's the presence of the Lord that we feel in this place. That's the peace of the Lord that we feel in this place. Just step into it. Just step into it. Satae Bakae. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. Shahaye le Bahaye ki. Shida Makae. You don't don't have to work anything up. He is here already. He is here already. Shataye, just tap into the flow. Just tap into the flow. Shata le bahar yo do re ne robo soto re de le mo robo shataye ah marie de ye le mo shataye ah re le baha ye le mo shataye i do bo shataye le bo robo kaye Urobo sabaka yele bo robo sa ye yere ber yo do lo lo ria da la baka he ma ye ha ma ha yo robo sata ye sata la ba ria da la baka ye shuturi ete re 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 lo robo sot hear me in the holy ghost hear me in the holy ghost God has taken us to various depths and lengths in the Word of God and in the Spirit. And I know this church is accustomed to flowing. And I know this church is accustomed to being used. But before you can be used, God wants to work through you. He wants to work in you before He can flow out of you. And God gave me a specific word this morning just in prayer. Some of you have been holding cares. Some of you have been holding cares of life. And God said something so very profound to me. I don't know if it would affect you, but it affected me. God told me, do you want to see a miracle? Let that go. Let that go. I don't care if it's something financial. I don't care if it's an emotion or a hindrance or an offense towards someone. You want to see a miracle within your attitude? You want to see a miracle within your spirit? You want to see a miracle within your finances? That care that you have, can we just lift that up to God right now and just let it go? Just let it go. You want to see a miracle? Just let it go right now. Just let it go and allow the grace of God to work within. And you will see a miracle being activated within your spirit. You will feel a liberty in the spirit. God wants to work within you before he can flow out of you. Can we just cast every care unto him? Every care unto him. Every care unto him. Every offense. Every financial need. Every physical need. You 
you want to see the miracle happen before you, uh, release it right now into him. Release it right now into him. Father, I want to see a miracle, but I can't have this doubt hinder your work within me, O oh Lord. So I release it to you, Father. I release it to you. Every care, every worry, you are a good father. You are a good father. You are a good father. Sata, limo nomo sata, limo sata yelebo soto. Sata yelebo sata, limo robo sata yelebo soto. That's it. Just release it right now. Just release it right now in the name of Jesus. Kabahaye, Kabahaye, Habamo Sataye, Lebo Soto Bahaye, Reberio no lo borriki. Subahaye de bosaye, hamoso tabahayo robosete, liburubu kusataya leberekia ya tabariondo lobosa. Robahaye le bosaye, ribahayo robo kusataye, ribayo robo sataye. And now can we position ourselves in a form of worship? Can we all stand in this place as a form of worship and thanking God for releasing it, thanking God for His grace to endure, thanking God for all that He has done and that all He is going going to do can we just position ourselves in a form of worship to God Shabaka yo robo sata libo dobo saye and why don't you give God a shout of praise give God a shout of praise give God a shout of praise hallelujah Jesus rebe yo robo ko shabaka ye libo robo sata ye libo robo ko tabaha ye libo sata Before we move further, can we just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost? If you have the Holy Ghost, would you just begin to pray in tongues or pray in the Spirit right now? God is doing something right now. He is orchestrating something apostolic. So we position ourselves a little bit deeper. Come on, why don't you just begin to do that? We're not waiting on the music right now. We're waiting on the Holy Ghost for what he wants to do. Come on, we've positioned ourselves, but why don't we position ourselves a little bit deeper? Come on, there's some things that God does that you got to go a little bit further in order to receive them. Come on, there's some levels of the Spirit where Jesus had to go a little bit further in the Garden of Gethsemane. We follow that example in the name of Jesus. My God. Come on, I believe God's going to do something, but can we just begin to position ourselves right now? I'm not looking for volume, but God is looking for a position right now. We align ourselves with what you're about to do into this place. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I feel like the Holy Ghost wants to set some things in motion this morning. As Brother Daniel began to pray, I felt the gift of faith come upon him so strongly. And I said, Lord, I feel the gift of faith. It's moving. And I said, Lord, do you want us to continue in this gift? Because I've been very careful and I don't want to work the gift. I want the gift to work me. I don't want to 
try to move the gift to make it do what I want to do. I just want to surrender to God and do whatever he wants. And so I was asking God, I said, Lord, I'm not going to work the gift. So whatever you have to do, I'm only going to do it if you initiate it. And so I asked the Lord, I said, God, is this the gift that you want us to operate in today? And the Lord spoke something so powerful. When he said it, it just set off just faith and confidence in, the, in my spirit. He said, if the gift is moving, it's a gift of the spirit, son. So who's the one that's moving the gift? It's the spirit. And if you're not moving it and you feel it in the atmosphere and you're asking yourself, God, do you want me to do this? Well, here's the thing. I'm the one that's moving it. You're not the one that's moving it. It's a gift of the spirit. So when you feel the gift of faith begin to arise, that's like God pushing it into your awareness and saying, here you go. This is what we're about to do because it's his gift. It belongs to him. And I feel that gift right now. And so what we're going to do, however long the Holy Ghost wants to do this, we're just, he, he, God showed me a vision. It was very quick. It was, it was like visualizing the gift of faith. And when one person caught on to the gift of faith that was in the atmosphere, it was like something inside them just was kindled. There was a fire burning. Something just ignited. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. And as other people begin to catch on to the gift of faith, other people around them begin to receive it because it began to become contagious. And so your faith in operation with the gift of faith, God's faith, is absolutely necessary. There needs to be a cooperation. There needs to be a synergy between the two because the gift of faith can operate, but you have to operate with it as well. You need to flow with it as well. And so, I believe that that gift is operating. And so, we're going to do something. I believe some of you, Pastor David and Brother Daniel, have already dealt with, with this and the Holy Ghost has already ministered. But if you have a need in your body, if you, whatever, you, whatever you have need of, whether it's emotional, whether it's physical, if, if you have a need, if, if you just want a touch from God even, the Holy Ghost is asking if you could make your way to this altar. And you may be wondering, well, why do I need to go to the altar? It's a part of the cooperation of faith. You got to believe first. You got to take a step of faith. Faith is a walk. Faith requires steps. Faith requires action because the word declares Faith without works is dead. So if you desire that touch, I, I believe if, if, if you just are hungry for God, you can come to this altar even. I, I feel like God is going to do something special right now. Jesus' name. Mm. Come on, some of you feel that gift right now it's moving and I didn't even say anything so it's the Holy Ghost that is moving this gift he is setting it in operation why don't you just begin to release your faith right now and latch on to his faith when you pray in the Holy Ghost you're not praying with your own faith. You're praying for his faith. You're praying with God's faith because you don't know what you're saying in tongues. And the Holy Ghost is the one praying through you, praying for things that you can't believe for on your own. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, God begins to release something extraordinary that cannot be released by English. He sataya. Come on, that's it. Release your faith. Release your faith. Release your faith. Come on, God wants a 
upper room experience right now. He wants to expose us to an upper room experience. Come on. We're apostolic. We're apostolic. This is where it started. Why don't you just begin to release the faith? If God's given you the gift of faith and you've seen it operate in your life, why don't you just begin to release it over someone right now? Right now in the name of Jesus Come on, God's moving right now. Come on, God's moving right now. You got to let him move. Come on, this is God's faith. This is God's faith. This is him praying through you things that you can't believe for on your own. Ah. Come on, when there's faith, God can draw out the anointing. God can draw out the anointing and begin to spread it over your life. And he'll begin to ignite it with the fire of the Holy Ghost. Come on, that's what's happening right now. Would you lift up your voice right now? Come on. This is not a cue for the ending. But would you just lift up your voice? Not just for 10 seconds. But would you lift up your voice in worship? Would you lift up your voice with authority? Come on, I refuse to stay the same. I refuse to stay the same. I refuse to be unmoved by the Spirit of God. I refuse to stay the same. Come on, some of you need to declare that in your spirit. You've been staying in the same waters for quite some time. God's saying, when are you going to get out and go into deeper places? When are you going to stop being so satisfied with being in the same depth? Come on, that's it. It's moving. It's not stopping. Come on, if God's still moving, if God's still moving it, let's move with it. If God's still moving it, let's move with it. He under Come on, we'll move in the spirit for however long he wants. He say, but if he's the one that's orchestrating it, we're gonna keep on flowing with it. Come on, that's it. Pray in tongues with faith. Pray in the Holy Ghost with that faith. I want you just to hear me for just a few moments. Just stay where you are. If you're at the altar, stay at the altar. That's it, sister. You're not being a hindrance. You can go ahead and flow. (sighs) Mm. The Holy Ghost is saying to someone right now, 
I am restoring years of brokenness you have experienced. Hmm. The Holy Ghost is in the business of restoring right now. I'm go He's going to restore right now. Years that you feel like you've lost. The years that you felt like you didn't do enough. The years where you felt like you were away from God. God's saying he's restoring those years. Come on. The book of Joel states, I will store the years that the locust hath eaten and the canker worm hath eaten up. I feel like God's restoring the years that depression has eaten up, that the sickness hath eaten up, that the doubt hath eaten up. Come on, I can feel the Holy Ghost restoring those years. Come on, he's restoring the years. You were in that backslidden state. He's restoring the years where you were away from God. He's restoring the years that you felt like it has eaten up. Come on. Between you and God. If you believe that, just receive it. If you believe that, just receive it. I will restore unto you the years. Ma, cut up that the depression hath eaten up I restore to you the years that the backsliddenness hath eaten up I will restore it unto you I will restore it unto you the years that the discouragement hath eaten up the years that the fear hath eaten up Oh, that's it. We're just flowing with the spirit right now. We're just feeling after the flow. I feel led to just say one more thing and then we'll see what the Holy Ghost wants to do after this. As I was pacing back and forth the side of the sanctuary. There was such a faith that came over me that I genuinely believed that God, it, it was interesting how it happened. I genuinely believed that there was not a doubt in my mind that God could save this whole world. When I experienced that, it kind of just, that thought differentiated itself from all the other thoughts I was thinking. And I, I feel like the Holy Ghost wants to do this. He put him the word families in my spirit. I can hear the Lord saying, the way this harvest and revival is going to spread is through families because it is all the families of the earth that shall be blessed when it's talking about the promise made to Abraham. And so some of you, your family's all here. Some of you, some of your family's here, but not all of them are. And there are some of you God is put a spirit of intercession upon you to pray for your family because you're the only one. But I believe God's going to do a quick work in our families. He's, that's what he's offering. That's what he's wanting for us to receive. And so very, as long as, long as the Holy Ghost wants, if you could just lift up your hands. If you're with your family, Go with, pray with your family. Um, I, f I feel like that would be necessary if you could, if your family is here, 
if you could just pray with your family. A man of God once told me that when the family is strengthened, when the family's in unity, it will take the whole church to another level. Some of you, you're praying with people that are not your blood relatives, but you're in the Holy Ghost right now because you're saying, this person's my brother. This person's part of my family because we have the same name, and that name's Jesus. Baptized in the same name. What the Holy Ghost wants us to do, begin to flow with the spirit of intercession wherever it leads. And God is going to begin to do a work in your family. The Holy Ghost is speaking right now. This, this phrase, unreached parts. He is going to reach and touch unreached parts. Would you just begin to flow with him right now? He's going to move in unreached parts. You want to know how God's going to reach the whole world? It's by the family. It's in all the families of the earth that shall be blessed. It's going to happen in my family, God. It's going to be done in my family. Come on. If you got unforgiveness, if you got a grudge against one of those people in your family, you got to let it go so that God can do whatever he wants. Come on. It doesn't matter what it is. Forgiving them doesn't justify and say that it was okay, but it releases you and it releases God to do whatever he wants to do. Come on, God's saying to some of you right now, the key to harvest in your family is forgiveness. The key to harvest in your family is forgiveness. And if you would forgive, you'll release me to do what I can only do and what you can't do on your own. Why don't we just begin to worship the Lord right now? Why don't we just begin to thank him right now? Come on, he's doing a work right now. He's doing a work right now in the name of Jesus. Will you just begin to lift up your hands and look towards heaven right now? Come on, we're not focusing on anything else but him right now. Would you just begin to focus on Jesus right now? Father, by the authority of your word, I pray your perfect will to be done in this service. Your whole will to be accomplished in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Can we continue to lift up our voice to him? Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the work that you've done already, Jesus. Oh 
presence Jesus can we just lift up our hands in this place any way that you know how can you just begin to worship him in a personal way in a way that's just between you and Jesus we worship you Lord thank you for your presence that we feel God we don't take it for granted Lord that you're in this place that you live within us father you're worthy of every praise Jesus let our praise be empty space. Come abide in this place. Every heart, you are transforming. Come and move, have your glory. Darkness trembles, mountains crumble, when you draw near to us, you draw near to us, strongholds breaking, destinies changing, when you draw near to us, you draw near to us.
my loose life, oh God. Lord, for you have come that we might have life. That's right, when you keep drawing closer to Him, just get as close as you can to Him. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, mountains crumble. In Jesus' name. When you draw near oh. to us, you draw near to us. That's right, let the peace of God. Let the peace of God touch you right now. Come on, let the peace of God touch your mind, your thoughts, your emotions. Let the presence of God touch every part of your being. When you draw As you draw near, near to, to Him, us, in the name of Jesus, He can da la bo kotora da la batase. He can da la 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 bo kotori da la basate. Draw near. That's right. Draw near to Him. That's why we sing. That's why we're singing to draw near to enter. Oh. Come on, somebody. You need this. You and I need this. We need this. Draw near to him. Oh, In the name of Jesus. Now would you talk to him right now? Would you 
Would you just talk to him as the presence of God has been when you draw near to poured out us, you draw as the presence of God has us, been strongholds drawing you. Now it's time to talk to him. It's time to talk to the Lord. You draw near just you and Jesus us, right now. You draw near just you and your father. Us. Darkness in the name of Jesus, he cut the thoughts that he's putting you into your spirit to us. are not your thoughts, you but are thoughts that come from the Lord. Us. In the name breaking. of Jesus, destiny when you draw near oh. to us. You draw near to In Jesus us. Name. Darkness trembles, mountains crumble. When you draw In near Jesus to name. us, you draw near yeah. to us. Strongholds breaking, yeah. destinies changing. Yeah. When you draw near to us, you draw That's near right. Just do to what God us. Wants you to do. Just flow with that living water. Flow with that living water that's coming He's out of in you. The room. Flow He's in Jesus' in the room. He's da, in da, 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 the room. He's in the room. He began to speak. I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. In the name of Jesus. I am the bread of life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. John 6, verse 30. Therefore they said to him, What sign will you perform that we may see it and believe you? 
What work will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. In verse 34, they said, Lord, give us this bread always. They were after the physical things, the needs that they have physically. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. He's not talking about something physical. He's talking about something spiritual. He said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Is that a reality to you and I? Or do you come from being full of the Holy Ghost like just now then to being hungry again for material things and thirsty again for temporary things? Do we go back and forth? Or is this scripture true that you'll never thirst again? I wonder if somebody really desires that right now, that when you make this step of faith that we are in, that you'll never hunger again for temporary things. You'll never be thirsty again for things that can never quite satisfy you. If that's you, if you're hungry for that, would you lift up both hands toward heaven? And would you make this a prayer? Would you ask your Father that is in this room right now and say, God, I don't want to go back and forth. I don't want, oh God, to go back and forth from the eternal to the temporary, oh God. But Lord, I want you change my appetite. Change my desires. Change my outlook. God, my work cannot satisfy me. My accomplishments will never feed my soul. But your presence and your spirit is the one that can feed me for eternity. It's the one that can quench the thirst in my soul forever. And I will never hunger again. Verse 47, he said, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. Your fathers ate manna in the wilderness and are dead. You know, that proves you can't live on the miraculous things. It It will not keep you. It will strengthen your faith. It won't keep you. He said, verse 50, this is the bread which comes down from heaven that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. I, if anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then said Jesus to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Now this troubled them because if you study the Word of God through your intellect, you will never get it. It will confuse you. In 
And they said, what is he talking about? He said, what's, what's going on here? He said, because verse 55, my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink. He who eats my flesh, drinks my blood, abides in me, and I in him. Is. And he said this in verse 59 in the synagogue. In verse 60, he said, therefore many of his disciples when they heard this said this is a hard saying who can understand it and Jesus knew in himself that his disciples complained about this his disciples and he said to them does this offend you verse 64 but there are some of you who do not believe For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were who did not believe and who would betray him. In verse 66, from that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. After he miraculously fed them, after the multiplication of the loaves and the fishes, after all the healings and the miracles. In verse 67, see, God proves us. It's always a proving time. Then Jesus said to the 12, the one that he handpicked, the one that he chose, do you want to go away? Do you also want to go away? And thank God for Peter. As many mistakes as he did and said, but he did walk on water. Even though he said he was ready to die for the Lord, yet he betrayed him three times. But Simon Peter answered him. See, if you're willing to speak under the unction of the Holy Ghost, even though your faith has not caught up with your, your actions, hasn't caught up with your faith yet, if you just speak it and say, God, I, I want to follow you. I want to live in you and through you. I want the gifts of the Holy Ghost to flow through me. If you're willing to speak that with faith, God will grant that to you. He will grant that to you. You see, Peter, with all of his deficiencies, he was not afraid to speak. That's why God chose him on the day of Pentecost. But Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Also, we have come to believe and know that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. How many of you? How many of you made that choice? I'm not going anywhere. I've found the truth. I've found the gospel. I've found the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus has revealed to you the way of salvation. Come on, somebody. Do you believe what you have received? Do you believe the Acts 2.38 message is the only way to be saved? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. This is where God, I believe, wants us to focus in verse 44. No man can come to me except the Father, which has sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Would you stand? And I want us to pray for souls that are yet to be born. For souls that need salvation. For people that you have been reaching for for people that God has given you a love for can you close your eyes would you begin to picture them in your mind can you close your eyes and would you begin to pray for them with faith that the fact the scripture states it's not about 
our talent. It's not about what we do, but it is the spirit that quickeneth. It is the spirit that draws no man can come unto him except the Spirit of God draws them. You that are here today, you are here because the Spirit of God is still drawing you. The Spirit of God is still dealing with you. The Spirit of God is still active in your life. And just as freely we have received, would you begin to freely give and pray for those that are yet to be born again of the water and of the Spirit Let's try go ahead in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yay. Pray for your loved ones. Pray for your loved ones in Jesus' name. Come on, pray for your friends. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. Now would you thank Him for hearing your prayers? Come on, would you thank Him for hearing your prayers? Would you release your faith? Would you believe in the name of Jesus Christ? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, can you picture them coming to the truth? Can you picture them receiving in the name of Jesus Christ? Hallelujah, 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 God. In Jesus' name, we rejoice, Lord. We rejoice. How many believe God's going to use you for somebody to be saved? To remain connected with those that are already part of the body but are under trial and severe testing. That we really begin to pray for one another. In Jesus' name. I want us to pray. We're, we're planning a, Brother David has put in a application to have a service for the Buena Park Church. And God willing, it'll be towards the end of the month. And, and Sister Sheila that's here, you're part of that, Sister Sheila. And, and others, Sister Jessica's family. But I want us to pray. We've put in... Brother David has put in an application for a school up there in Buena Park area. We're going to have a service in the afternoon around 3.30. But I want us to pray that God would draw people. Not us. We're going to do our part. But that God would draw people. Would you pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. By the power and the authority of the word. Because it is your will that we're following, oh God. I release now the drawing of your spirit. I release the drawing of souls. I release the drawing upon Sister Jessica's family. I release the drawing, oh God. Lord, upon Elsa and her family. Upon Sister Sheila, her friends, her family. The Villarin's friends and family, oh God. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, somebody release your faith. Somebody release your faith. In the name of Jesus, draw all men unto you, Lord. Draw all men unto you, oh God. Draw all men unto you, Father. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Yeah, Josh, you're a part of that. Your friends, your family, your grandmother. You're a part of that in Jesus' name. 
How many of you sense God moving and drawing people even now? Even right now? Can you sense it in your spirit? It's not a hollow prayer. It's a powerful prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We had a great time at the Connect Group. We had a Connect Group at Sister Martha's house last Friday. And thank God for ministry that occurred. Amen. Uh, this coming week, this week rather, because Sunday is the beginning of the week. Uh, Brother Jay's house at the Multicultural Connect Group. Keep that in prayer. There's people that are consistently coming that need the Holy Ghost, that need salvation. You pray for Brother Jay and Sister Ella as they've opened up their home that God will begin to give them divine favor and teach these souls the Word of God. Amen. And reach them in Jesus' name. Sister Keisha is also this Thursday in the college and career. Can you pray for that right now in the name of Jesus Christ? Lord, as the disciples and the apostles went to the temple and they also went from house to house, this is your word, this is your plan, this is what you want, and we're obeying it, oh God. Uh, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for those, uh, oh Lord, are not yet a part of uh, this ministry, that they become a part of it, oh God, and those uh, that you have been dealing with to open their home, uh, because it is your home, really, God. Uh, Lord, that their neighbors, their family, only those that they can reach can have, oh God, an opportunity to be saved. We pray in Jesus' name. Somebody shout in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated if you want. You know, there are people that only you can, can reach. Did you know that? There was a survey, I, I heard it somewhere, that I think the question was, if, if there's a God, would you like to get to know him? And upwards of 70 to 80 percent of the people in the United States says, yes, I'd like to get to know him. In the same group were asked, would you like to come to a church? And only about 30 percent said they will come to church. And then another question said that if would you be willing to attend a group, a small group? Not in a building like this, but a small group. So get, you could get to know this God. And an overwhelming 80% said they're willing. You see, unless you and I really believe that there's people that only you can reach. In the vicinity of your home, in the vicinity of where you work or your school where you exercise whatever you do day to day where you spend the most time that's your mission field those are the people that God has entrusted you as part of the body of Christ filled with the spirit anointed of God how many believe you are anointed of God the gifts following the signs following them that believe how many you believe And you plant those seeds and you keep reaching for them in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. On the 21st of this month, Wednesday, we're dismissing our Wednesday night. We won't have Wednesday night service. We are going to have our camp meeting. Our once a year district camp meeting. All the churches in Southern California gathering together. We'll be meeting at the Riverside Convention Center. And Friday starts at 7, Thursday, excuse me, Wednesday starts at 7, evening, p.m. And then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, there's morning services at 10 a.m. And then evening services at 7 p.m. I want to highly encourage you to attend one or all of the services. 
And if you have a calendar, which by the way, you could download online. How many of you uh, know you can download this online? Amen. We got one, two, three. How many how many of you know you can download this online? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So praise God. So you go online, stlh.org, then you go to messages, then downloads. Uh, you could also go to events and you could download this flyer, email it to your friends, and it will be a blessing to them. Praise God. Praise God. I'm excited. Uh, there's there's booths during this gathering. And so you've got people that uh, are selling stuff, actually. Uh, you know, you've got people selling books. Uh, you've got people selling uh, crafts. In fact, our very own Dana will have a booth there. So you pray for her as she reaches and, and just, just being a witness. In Jesus' name. Brother Luke, we're so thankful you're here. And how many of you love Brother Luke? It was such a pleasant surprise driving into the parking lot, and there was Brother Luke, and Dylan could just hardly contain himself. He started screaming in the car and opening the door while the car was still in motion, and, and uh, we are so thankful that he is here. And I've asked him to come and, and testify and take up the offering. Brother Luke, would you come? How many of you love him in Jesus' name? Thank God for him. Good morning, church family. How are you? God is good, isn't he? Uh, it's good to be in the house of the Lord today. Uh, I just want to say a few words about uh, what I've been doing while I've been gone. Um, we've been over in the South China Sea area. Um, God's been doing good things overseas. Um, the world is a lot different from, you know, America over there. But the one thing that doesn't change is the churches are all the same. Huge communities of people in all these different places. Sri Lanka, South Korea, Indonesia. Just God is doing big things all over the world. And um, on our ship, we started out the first day of church, you know, a small little group of us. There were like maybe five, five to eight of us. Just a little gathering and then by the end of deployment there was 50 plus people there you know attending service regularly so good to see God working and you know we are all so blessed you know we can come here we don't have any worries you know safe community people that love us all around us you know, God's blessed us so much and it makes you think about how much you have the ability to give you know especially like you think about the people that have lessened you I go overseas and I see people living, you know, on the streets, very small communities, low income. It's like in America, we are so, so blessed. You know, take up, taking up an offering is a good chance where we can give back. You know, God has blessed us so much. We can give a little bit back. So today as you come and give your offering, don't think about yourself. Don't think about what you're doing. But think about how you, what you have can benefit other people, how you can make a difference. So with that, come and give what God places on your heart, you know. Thank you. Amen. Would you come and give in Jesus' name? And as you're coming, I, I didn't ask them this, but Dana, would you come? Or Dylan, probably Dana. Just to let you uh, know what's been happening, how God has uh, touched them and been working on them, what they've been doing. So uh, me, Dylan, and I, the past couple weeks have been doing more Bible studies with youth, with Jasmine and with Nina, and we're planning to continue, especially the Bible study with Jasmine. 
We're planning to continue that, make it a regular thing on Thursdays. And if there's anyone else in the youth who would like to join us, it's kind of like a connect group, but just we came to her home. She opened her home to us, prepared us some food, and we just had an amazing time in the Lord, talking about scripture, talking about the word of God, the truth. And so I would just like to open that up to any youth that would like to join us. Um, she lives in Laguna, Laguna Nigo, I believe, um, around that area. And God has just been doing amazing things um, in our youth, reaching the young people, Jasmine. She unfortunately could not make it today. She is sick, but she is just receiving so open to the word of God, so open to the revelation from God. And um, if Dylan would like to share anything about that. I'm blessed to be um, working alongside of my, my brother. <laughs> well, before I mention all, all the awesome things that God is doing, it's truly a blessing to be able to work alongside family and ministry. Um, it feels feels like we're regional missionaries in the state of California. It's, it's really exciting. Um, I wanted just to mention, uh, I believe it was this Friday, uh, Brother Edwin, he uh, left for deployment. We got to see him before he left. We got to eat our last last meal together on, on American soil. But it was a really wonderful time. We just got to talk to him and talking a lot about memories and I just when he when he left for deployment I just there was some there was just a piece that said God you're going to take care of him he's going to be okay and so if you could please keep brother Edwin in prayer um, it's funny we have one sent one come back <laughs> but we're thankful for what God is doing um God is doing some powerful things. Uh, there are being Bible studies taught. I want to encourage you, if you have never taught a Bible study, uh, ask God, Lord, open a door for me. Because he will open a door. And the reason why I know that, I asked God to open a door. And now, there's, I don't have enough hands to open all of them all at once. And so I want to encourage you, ask God, Lord, I want to see souls saved. Would you allow me to teach a Bible study to someone? And God will grant that desire in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, I was just told, uh, Brother Couchman, thank you for letting me know, that Brother Holloman was actually promoted to sergeant. So we congratulate him on that in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, when you seek first the kingdom of God, God takes care of you. Be in prayer next Sunday is Father's Day. And all the fathers in the house and those that you are going to invite, we have a gift for every father. It's, uh, it's top secret, but it's beautiful. I've seen it. Man, it's, it's nice. And uh, thank God for Brother Jim to help me doing that. And so uh, download this online go to the website download this email it text it to your friends invite them and tell them there is a father whose name is jesus that loves them that wants to save them that could be a father to them if they don't have a father amen and, and i know that that is so true to many many if not all of us amen good to see also itself and good to see lupe Itzel is near and dear to me because I baptized her. How old was she? 10? Maybe 11? Somewhere there. We thank God for her. And good to see Kathy from San Diego from going to school over there. And thank God for her in Jesus' name. Amen. I have a word from the Lord, and I believe it will be a blessing to all of us. Would you just lift up your hands and say, Father, whatever you have for me today, I want it. 
however you want to speak to me God so that I could number one get close to you and that you could speak to me and that you could change me I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would Father lead me and guide me in the name of Jesus Christ somebody say amen how many believe God how many believe God how many really believe God? Not, not in a God, Sister Terry, if you would help me. How many really believe God? Uh, not in a God, but you believe God. God himself. In, in Romans, Paul began to write in chapter 4, What then shall we say that Abraham our father has found according to the, the flesh? Or he's talking about temporary things now about, about Abraham. For if Abraham was justified by works, he has something to boast about, but not before God. So God made it really, really clear that our justification is not by what we do, or for that matter, what we cannot do. And he references Abraham, who is the father of the faithful. In fact, we have salvation because of Abraham. Because out of Abraham came the Messiah. And if there was no Abraham that actually believed God, not in God, but believed God, then there won't be any Messiah. <laughs> Amen. And this is what the Lord said about Abraham in verse 3. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God. Not in a God, but God. Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. The word accounted there is a, an accounting term, meaning an account has been opened for Abraham. And God deposited righteousness. Could you put that up, please, Sister Terry? Verse, what is that, verse 3? That Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. So when you believe God, God opens an account in your name and he deposits righteousness. Not because of what you've done, not because of what you can do, not because of the bad things that you've done, but because you believed him. So you have an account. Now the subject of believing in God and believing God has been a source of contention for many Christians. There's one Bible, yet there's so many ways of beliefs, so many flavors of Christianity. Some believe this, some believe that. Although all of them, they could have some sort of scripture to support their belief, but how many realize you can't build a doctrine on one scripture? Because the Bible says in the mouth or in the witness of two or three scriptures, let every word be established or let it be so. And so if you get one scripture that contradicts another scripture, then the scripture is not wrong. It's our interpretation that needs to line up with the word of God and every word of God. How many are thankful that you're growing in your knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the subject of believing is so important because it's believing that saves us. But it's not the act of believing alone. But it's what you do with the revelation that's been given to you. It's your action, amen, that saves you in response to the word of God. Does that make sense to somebody? And so the subject is, you know, you could, you could dribble the ball, right? If you love basketball or if tennis, you could hit the ball. I don't play tennis. I wear them. But it's not how, it's how all these peripherals, it's, it's about scoring, right? It's not knowing about all the word of God. It's about being saved. At the end of the day, your doctrine of how to be saved is the most important belief of God that you could ever 
possibly imagine in your life uh, because it's a heaven and hell issue. Uh, what do you say to somebody how they are going to be saved? So there's so many flavors. Some people accept the Lord, right? We've been kind of discussing this, me and my wife. Accepting denotes superiority, right? Like I, I accept Dylan as my son. I'm his dad. It denotes superiority. You're not superior to God. You don't accept God. Accept means also highly favorable. You don't say, I hire, I'm going to give you my favor. I'm going to accept you, God. That's not a right term. We're accepted in the beloved, but that's a different story. and I don't have enough time to, to, to explain that. But maybe the right word would be to believe the word or accepting the word that way to believe the word and then obeying it. I'd buy that. Another doctrine is you just got to be good. You'll be safe, right? There's a problem. The Bible says there's none that's good. No, not one. My dad taught me that. Hey, just be good. Don't kill anybody. Don't steal. Haven't killed anybody so far. Amen. And, you know, I've repented of the things I've stolen. Praise God. Amen. Did that shock you or you just forgot what you've done? <laughs> Amen. You know, I, I remember at work one time, Brother Luke, uh, this was when I lived in L.A. I took a, a, a box of paper clip and I was going to bring it home because I needed some. And as I was picking it up, the Lord told me, you're stealing. I go, these are my paper clips. The, I, I actually argued with him. It's on my desk. I requisitioned it. They gave it to me. He said, they're not yours. And I was already in my car in P4. I park in P4. It's indoor parking. And the Holy Ghost said, give it back. And I'm like, I had to take it from my car and go all the way up to the eighth floor, put it back on my desk. Because according to him, it's stealing. Amen. And it is true. Because I didn't buy it. Right? They didn't say, hey, you could take it home. Right? Because what's stopping from paperclip? Might as well bring the whole computer. Because I use it too. <laughs> Amen. And that's really stealing. Praise God. So we can't be good to be saved. Some say, what does it say? Uh, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ or just call on the name of the Lord. You know, if you, if you go through discipleship, we explain all of that. And I pray you do. Because Paul warned Timothy in 2 Timothy 3, 7, you could always learn, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. There is the gospel and there is the truth. And those are synonymous terms. The gospel is the truth because it's the gospel that saves us. Amen? The death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. But you have also to obey the gospel, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so as God begins to draw you to him, uh, God begins to reveal himself to you that you have to obey the gospel and you've got to settle that in your spirit. How do I obey the gospel? Amen. You see, Jesus hides himself because he is the truth. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except the Spirit draws him, which God references, referenced this morning. But in Luke 10, 21, in that hour, Jesus rejoiced. Now, think about that for a moment, that Jesus was happy. Right? Because Jesus is happy. How many of you know that Jesus is happy? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. You know... You, you and I need to erase the, the painting of, I think during the Renaissance period, of how Jesus looks. Jesus doesn't have long hair. Amen? Because the Bible says, Paul wrote, it's a shame for a man to love, have long hair. Jesus doesn't have that blue-eyed and, and light complexion. No. He's a Jew. Amen? 
He had beaten, weathered skin. He had rough hands because he was a carpenter. I mean, you know a carpenter. I mean, not, not a real carpenter. Not a, not a weekend carpenter. I'm, I'm talking about one that wears a tool belt, you know, five times a week. And when you shake their hand and you ask them, what, what are you? And they say, I'm a farmer. And, and, and you shake their hand. And, but Brother Luke is not a farmer. He's got soft hands. <laughs> you know, if, if you shake my hand and I, I'm going to tell you, I'm a carpenter. I'm a part of Local 1082. And you go, no, you're not. Why? Because your hands are smooth. He hardly knows. Did you know there's different types of hammer? And I digress. I thought a hammer is a hammer and a hammer. What? I've got a hammer and a hammer all day. Did you know there's a finishing hammer? There's a whatever. What, what other hammers, Brother Couchman? They didn't even know that one. And what else? The sledgehammer. I have one of those. A mallet. I thought, you know, when I go to Home Depot, I look at a hammer. You know, they, they, I went one time ago, I need a hammer. What kind of hammer? A hammer. Yeah, but there's different kinds. Just give me a hammer, okay? Because I had no clue. But Jesus rejoiced. Think about this. He rejoiced, and this is the reason why he's thankful. I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast hid these things. He's hiding the revelation of who he is. Who is he hiding it from? I hid these things from the wise. How many are smart? How many of you consider yourself to be intelligent? Prudent over there actually means intelligent. Wise means smart. So you could be smart and don't know how to apply knowledge. Right? But these are smart people that know how to apply the knowledge. But temporary academic knowledge doesn't mean you understand the word of God. Because you could ever learn about the word of God, but never come to the knowledge of the truth. Why? Because Jesus hides it from people that say, well, I'm going to study the word of God today. Well, did great. How are you going to study it? By my intellect. I'm going to put this together like a, like a formula in a physics book. It doesn't come that way. You know how you study the Word of God? You pray. And you say, Lord, uh, whatever he's dealing with you about, maybe it's about miracles, maybe it's about healing, maybe it's about the gift of the Spirit. So you break out the book and you begin to study and you begin to read and you don't study it out of your intellect. You ask him because there's a lot of things in the Word of God that you say, I don't understand this, Lord. I don't, don't understand how this works. I don't really understand this in application. What do you mean you lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. What do you mean they shall speak with new tongues? What do you mean if I drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt me or harm me? What do you mean I'll cast out devils? And he's going to begin to talk to you. And you're going to have revelation. Because he revealed them unto babes. Turn to somebody and call them babes. Now, that's not, if your wife or, or whoever your love is here, that, that, that might be appropriate, but maybe we shouldn't have done that with all the things that are happening, you know, all over the world today. Uh, but the, the word babe there are, are those that are innocent in approaching God as a child and say, I don't know anything. I'm going to empty my mind of all the knowledge that I have, and I want revelation. 
I don't want knowledge. I want revelation. Because revelation saves us. Revelation changes us. Revelation comes from the Father. Knowledge comes from the earth. They're earthly. They're sensual. They're even devilish. But revelation comes from Him. And that's the kind we want. Because it saves us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The word, uh, it says, verse 22, all things are delivered to me of my Father. Now, there's only one God, and we'll get to that. And no man knoweth who the Son is but the Father. And who the Father is but the Son. And, to, and he to whom the Son will reveal. Reveal to him. You can really only get to know somebody when you're around them, right? When you spend time with them, when you talk to them, Right? You get to know your kids, you get to know your spouse, you get to know your co-workers, your friends. The word reveal means, is the Greek word apokal, apokalypto, means to reveal, to uncover, to take out of hiding, to cause something to be fully known. Because the word of God is a secret. The word of God is like a treasure in the field. That when he reveals it to you, you sell everything you have to purchase that field. You let go of everything that you ever have and say, I want this gospel. I want this Jesus. I want this God that I now know a little bit more today than yesterday that I could sense. And that it changes my life when I wake up and I began to pray and I began to really cast my cares. And if I'm down, he begins to touch my emotions and I feel better sooner than later in Jesus' name. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Ephesians 1, 9, having made known unto us the mystery of his will. It's not the English word mystery as in something mysterious that you cannot know. But the word myster mystery is mysterion, which means it is a secret that has been revealed to an in-group or restricted constituency. It's a secret that is known only to those that are part of that group. So God hides his word. God reveals it to those that seek him. And those that seek him, then revelation of the mystery, the secret of God, his will has to be given to you and I. So that we could actually understand it. According to his good pleasure, which he has purposed in himself in Luke 24 45 then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scripture every day you have to pray for Lord open my understanding Somebody pray that prayer right now. Lord, open my understanding. I don't want to approach your word intellectually. Oh, God, open my understanding. Reveal your will. Reveal your secret, oh, God, that I may understand the scriptures in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, because that's the only way you can be saved. And that's the only way you can freely give to others what you have but have been revealed to you. In fact, Paul wrote in another scripture one, uh, another time, he said, you know, everything that we have, everything that we possess is something that was given to us. And so freely we have received, we freely give. And we cannot boast about what we've received. That's why our, the things that we've written, the things that Sister Chica has written, and we've never sold any of those at all. Even before we knew Bishop Wright. I remember Brother Eli Hernandez, he, he had some of those, and I gave him some of it, and he actually used it overseas and gave it to churches over there. And he told me, you know what, you, you, should, you should sell these. And I just didn't really feel that I could, could do that. I didn't really have the, the, the release from God. Now, I'm not knocking people that are, you know, selling stuff. That's not my point. But, but as for me, that's what God is dealing with me about, and I'm going to be accountable to what he's telling me. Just like you're going to be accountable what he's telling you. Amen. One example of a secret being revealed that God is one. It's a secret. Where is that, Pastor? 
that he is numerically one in Deuteronomy 6, 4. He says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord, and it's capital letters. Did you notice that? The Lord, it's all capitalized because it's a tetragrammaton of the word, of the name of God that cannot be pronounced. But in the English, anytime you read it as capitalized, it means it is J-V-H-H or for Jehovah, which is not Jehovah. Can we just take it out of you shouldn't, you shouldn't be pronounced pronounce it. It's Jah. Right? Is that brother? Is the first letter of the Hebrew alpha, uh, that, that, that letter at least, J, is Jah. So it's like, you know, A, B, C, A. Uh, you just pronounce the first letter. Because you can't pronounce it. So there's Jehovah is not even a biblical word. Did you know that? Because you're not supposed to add to the word of God. Hello, somebody. Man, you're nitpicking. Really? Read it. I didn't write it. I'm just reading it. The Lord, our God, is what? One. One can't be two. Amen? Or in three or four. If you go back to mathematics when you went to school, you cannot know your teacher. I, I know they don't know what a woman is anymore, which is kind of crazy because we've known all these thousands of years, right? And then all of a sudden we woke up, oh, we don't, we don't know what it is anymore. It's almost like, you know, I don't know what one is anymore. Well, you got one finger, hold it up. That's what it means. Mathem this word, one, is mathematically meaning one. Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. You shall love the Lord, capitalize your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength. Because you can only love one. Right? With everything. If one has everything, the other one, which is two, has nothing. Right? If I give all of my money to my wife. <laughs> then everybody else has nothing because she's got all of it. Even I have nothing. Right? Does that make sense? If you love God, one, with everything, all the other gods, so-called gods, have nothing left over. That's why you could only have one. And in fact, this is the first or the one commandment that you love God with all your heart, soul, and strength. And these words which I command you this day, it's not a suggestion that shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children. You shall talk about them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. We don't do a lot of that, do we? We talk about a lot of things, except this one. He said, when you wake up, you talk about one God. Praise God. When you talk to your children, hey, just want to let you know, there's one God. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you, eat, when, you, when you sit down and eat uh, canes or whatever it is, you say, hey, by the way, there's one God. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you're walking, when you see Holloman in the parking lot, you jump out of the car while it's moving, you say, hey, by the way, there's one God. <laughs> Praise God. When you're laying down because you're going to take a nap because you stayed up all night, <laughs> you say to somebody that's laying there, I guess, there's one God. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the Hebrew, it's Shema Israel Adonai Elo Elenu Eloheinu Echad. Some say Echad. Not Echad. Echad. The Hebrew word Echad, when you pronounce it, it's got to be nasal. It's going to come out of your palate on the top of the roof of your mouth and it's come out of your nose. Echad. Like you're spinning out. That's the proper pronunciation. Like you're spitting. A cod. Amen? So you won't, <laughs> so you won't forget. Because a cod means one. A cod means numerically one. It means number one. Number one in order. Number one in preferences. Number one. Not the second in your life. Number one. 
And he's never going to settle for second place in your life. He's got to be all or nothing. He's got to be number one to love with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength or nothing at all. He will never settle for leftovers in our life. One, the Greek word for ekad is heis, H-E-I-S, which also means, guess what? One. Mathematically, one. Why is that so important? Because today, if you believe in the Trinity, if you don't believe rather in the Trinity, it's like some sort of sacrilegious thing. <gasps> You're leaving out the Son if you just believe in the Father. Well, what about the Holy Ghost? Well, what about if they're all the same? That they're one different manifestation is the, of this one True God. Now, if you study and you got Google, right? This used to be you got by books and, and, you know, concordances and all that. But, but today you're all so fortunate and there's no room for ignorance because you could Google it. Yeah. Now with AI, you could actually speak to it. I haven't downloaded it yet. I'm kind of resenting it a little bit. But at some point, perhaps, you know, uh, maybe I'll say, you know, I'll subscribe. A, write me a notes about believe God. And it'll spit out some pages. Because he could do that. But, you know, there's a programmer behind that. And so if they don't believe in one God, they'll probably come out with the Trinity. Did you know where the Trinity came from? Did you know that Constantine, the first so-called Roman Christian emperor in 325 AD, 325 years after the death of Jesus Christ, gathered all the bishops of Rome and they said, this is what we're going to believe. We're going to believe that God is a triune God. That there's a father who's separate, there's a son who's separate, and there's the Holy Ghost that's separate. But all of these three are one, but they're one in unity, not numerically. They're one in agreement. That's their, that's their teaching. And Constantine brought sweeping religious spiritual changes in the Roman Empire when he came into power. And it was a relief to the Christians because before Constantine, they were being slaughtered wholesale in, 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 in arenas, in, in coliseums. But now they got, you know, all of a sudden like Joe Biden will be, you know, pro-Christian. And everybody goes, oh, hallelujah. But then he said, but there's a condition. Here's what we're going to do. In, in Constantine's day, there's a condition. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to instead of converting the Roman Empire into Christianity, we're just going to Christianize the gods that they serve. That's what he did. And so he Christianized. So I don't know if you know this, but the triune God goes back. I think it's in Genesis chapter 8. It mentions Nimrod. And, and, and Nimrod is, is basically uh, the sun god. So you got Nimrod, then you've got uh, Semiramis, I think is her name. Let me look this up real quick. And then they had a son called Tammuz. So Nimrod, Semiramis, and Tammuz. So Nimrod is a sun god who miraculously inseminates Semiramis, or whatever her name is. And then they gave birth to Tammuz, the son. Sound familiar? So instead of converting them, Constantine the Great, the first one said, let's just rename them. You could continue what you're doing. You could serve those same gods, but just rename them. Let's name them Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Let's name them Father, Mary, or Mary, Joseph, Mary, and Jesus. Right? Because they, I don't know if you, if you is this okay? We're going to teach some, and we're going to, Preach some. Right now I'm teaching. They worship. In, in Spanish. I think Magdalena. I think is what they call them. So it's the, the mother and child. Right. They worship Mary. Because. 
She's the mother of Jesus, right? And we should worship her, right? Because she's closer to Jesus. So if Jesus doesn't answer you, you go to mom. Because mom's closer to the son, right? We all know that, right? So, you know, if Dana or Dylan goes to dad, then, hey, can we buy this? And go, no. And so they go to mom. And they go, hey, mom, can we buy this? And she goes, yes. And she'll override. <laughs> right? We all know that, right? That might, that might be true in the natural. It doesn't work with God. Because Mary was in the upper room, and she needed to be saved. She needed to repent of her sins, be baptized in Jesus, and be filled with the Holy Ghost. So what did Constantine do? The goddess Diana, which actually Paul mentions in, in the New Testament, that, that when they, they, this Paul who preached Jesus has endangered this goddess Diana and the temple whom all Asia worships. So they named the goddess Diana to be Mary. And all the other holidays that we celebrate has remnants of Constantine, of what he's done. Right? For example, everybody knows there's an Easter bunny. Right? Have you, right? Of course there's an Easter bunny because everybody says there is. Not only that, it lays eggs. Right? For sure you've seen a bunny laying eggs. Have you? You, know, you think, where did that come from? Because it's the goddess of fertility. The bunny. Amen. Where did that come from? From Constantine. Now Christmas. Oh man. I step on sometimes. Oh, don't touch Christmas. Well, we're just in June. <laughs> so relax. It's too early for Christmas. Although Dylan says Christmas every day. <laughs> Amen. So Santa Claus. Everybody knows there's Santa Claus, right? Everybody knows my gift comes didn't come from mom and dad. Didn't come from Target. <laughs> we don't shop there anymore. Or less. Everybody knows there's this obese man in a red suit that could miraculously fit through my chimney. You know how large my chimney is? Man, it's like, I don't know, two by two. If that, he can't fit there. Especially his reindeers. And they can fly. You've all, you've all been told a lie, right? Yeah, I have. I remember a vivid, Brother Johnny, this is the honest to God's truth. I, th I don't know how old, about 10, maybe I was 10 or so, that, that we were, you know, in the Philippines, all very festive, the Christmas. Man, you, you, got, you guys don't know how to celebrate Christmas here. Christmas, my God, it just, Christmas starts in, in the Philippines around September. And it's, it's every, it's just amazing. And, and I remember we're, we're eating, you know, and we ate, you know, cheese and ham and all. And I remember looking at this tree because, you know, we got to worship the tree, right? I'll get to that in a minute. Amen. And I remember, I'm like, I was telling my siblings, it goes, I think Santa Claus just left those stockings. I'm pretty sure they're full because I felt it, Brother Couchman. I really did. I really did. And I go, Let, let's go over there because I think he was there when we were not looking. Because he knows when you're not looking. He knows when you're not awake. And he knows when you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. Oh, you better watch out. Yeah, you better not pout because he knows everything. Kind of like God. Right? Oh, yeah. Did you know they worship reindeers in the Nordic tribes? Did you know there's three different Santa Clauses? One's really good, one's really bad, one's in the middle. Did you know that? It mirrors the triune God that Constantine just Christianized. Did you know that the Druids actually worship the way we celebrate Christmas? The Druids, they would decorate the tree with red and gold and green 
They would cut the tree and they would worship. I know you don't worship the tree, right? And I'm not saying not have a tree. If that's your thing, as long as you don't worship, you know, please don't go by on a tree. Oh, Christmas tree. Oh, Christmas tree. Please don't sing that. Right? You could sing Christmas songs, I guess. Oh, you better watch out. Maybe not. Sing about Jesus. Get a birthday cake for Jesus. Hello? I remember Sister Gina who moved to Las Vegas one day. He goes, you know what? We all talk about Christmas here. Let's have a birthday cake. I go, you know what? That's a great idea. Let's have a birthday cake for Jesus. And we sang happy birthday. Yeah. If you want to spoil the next Christmas, get a birthday cake for Jesus and sing. But all of this comes from Constantine the Great. And you, you go on of all the holidays. Even the names of Monday is the moon god. Sunday is the sun god. That's how powerful the influence was. Amen. But notice, here's a scripture in 1 Timothy 4, verse 1 to 3. Paul warned, now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now that's a strong statement. He is saying it is demonic. It seduces people's minds and emotions. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry. Uh oh. Now, who forbids their priests today to marry? Right? I'm not pointing any fingers, I'm reading to you the Word of God. Because the Word of God is true for all generations. Forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats. This was written thousands, or hundreds of years ago now. Almost 2,000 years. And yet it's happening today. That's the word of God. He's amazing. I mean, he's all truth. He's powerful. Commanding to abstain from meats. The Lent season, I grew up Catholic. And I'm not knocking Catholics. Catholics makes good apostolics. Oh, my Filipino brethren over here. Praise God. Because Philippines is an 80, 90% Catholic. Praise God. You can't eat meat on Lent season. You can't eat pork. They made an exception for fish because fish is not meat. That's what they said. You eat fish. Right? Now, why do they command to abstain from meats. I was studying this and I said, Lord, well, I've always read this. I've always known this phrase, but why? And, and the Lord said, well, you know about Passover? I go, yeah. What did they do in Passover? I go, well, they applied the blood on the doorpost and the death angel passed over them. And he said, what else? I go, I don't know. What else is there? And he said to, to, to me, well, read, dummy. You didn't say dummy, but I felt like that. You know, I, I mean, I feel like that sometimes. Like the Lord is so kind and patient, and that we just add to his word, and we just beat ourselves down. Amen? We might be dummies in his eyes, but he never calls us dummies. You know who he calls dummies? The people that said, the fool saith in his heart, there is no God. That's the only people that God calls dummies. But in Exodus 12, verse 3 to 4, speak unto the congregation of Israel, and I'm hurrying, saying, The tenth day of this month thou shalt take them, every man, a lamb. Some say a lamb. According to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to their number of souls, every man according to his what? Eating. They ate meat during Easter. At least the Jews does. And here you have a belief that Paul called seducing doctrines of devils. They will forbid to marry. And they will command to abstain from meats. Hallelujah. And so Constantine just Christianized the pagan gods. And, and it's interesting if you study history and archaeology. Every 
nation that they've dug up has some sort of triune belief of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Or, or, or of, of, of some triune representation. But God is not a trinity. Amen. The Godhead is not a trinity. 1 Corinthians 8 verse 5 to 6. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, of whom all things and we for him and one Lord, Jesus Christ, from whom all things and through him we live. And you say, well, there's two at least. There's Father and there's the Lord. Now, if the Lord is capitalized, L-O-R-D, it means the tetragrammaton, J-V-H-V-H. If it's capital L, then lowercase O-R-D, it's the deity of Jesus Christ. It, because it says the Lord Jesus Christ. He is both human and divine. Hallelujah. He's human so he would have sinless blood to die on the cross for you and I. So we can be saved. But he is divine. He said, I laid down my life willingly. No man can take it from me. I'll take it back up because he resurrected. You and I can be resurrected as well in the newness, in the power of the Holy Ghost that's inside of us. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. There's one God. There's one God. Well, pastor, I, I can't understand. There's father and then there's son. There's got to be two. We're celebrating Father's Day next Sunday. Brother Jay, you're a father, right? Yeah. And are you also a son? I'm pretty sure. In fact, every father is a son. Because you're male. X, was it X, X chromosome? Or is it X, Y? What is it? Somebody look it up. <laughs> and so, X, Y, right? X, Y chromosome for male. X, Y. Brother Jay, there's two of him. You see it? You see beside him? Because his father and sons. Is, is he the one beside him? It's, it's so amazing. We make this distinction on this. But yet we're celebrating Father's Day and there's not times two fathers. We're going to run out of hats, Brother Jim. <laughs> Praise God. What a revelation. <laughs> what a simplicity of the word. What a powerful Amen. illustration. That there's one God. He is Father in creation. He's a Son in the flesh to die for our sins in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Colossians 2.8, the Lord warns, beware lest any man cheat you through philosophy, through empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the word, and not according to Christ. For in him, not in them, in Jesus dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in Him. So when you pray to Jesus, your prayer is complete. When you mention the name of Jesus, the complete work of Calvary is available to you. Uh, when you cast out devils in the name of Jesus, you're complete because He is head of all principality and power in the name of Jesus Christ. Constantine, 300 plus years after the death of the apostles, introduced this doctrine which the apostles did not believe they would have opposed it but they were already dead hallelujah Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone now why doesn't God just plainly say he is God why does he say I'm, I'm everything there's only one why, why all these father son and all that Oh, but he has. You see, the majority of converts were Jews from the beginning. The majority of the church 
was almost 100% Jewish, not only till they turned their backs and the apostle Paul said, I'll go to the Gentiles. I'll preach to the Gentiles. Almost all of them were one God Jews. At the eighth day, when they're circumcised, the male child, they recite the Shema, Shema Israel Adonai Elehu Echad. That's what they say. I actually said that to Dana when she was born. I said, Hero Israel, the Lord of God is one Lord. And, and the, the doctor, the attending physician, he goes, he heard me, he goes, Are you Jewish? I go, Yeah, don't, don't I look like one? And I'm like, What kind of question is that? I go, I believe in Abraham. We kind of a little short conversation. Because they still do that today. They recite on the eighth day the Shema. Israel, Adonai, here is the Lord our God is one Lord. How many are thankful there's one? And you can pray to one. And one is enough in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. And you got to believe God. You, got, you cannot believe in a God. You got to believe God to be saved. Because if you just believe in God, here's another doctrine to be saved. Oh, just believe God and, and I'll be saved. Right? That's, my dad told me that. You know, son, if you believe in God, you're, you're going to be saved. Really? But James says otherwise. Right, Sister Terry? Can you, can you help me? It says there in, was it James? James 2 verse 19, thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. So the devils are saved. Are they? No, they're not. So the doctrine of, oh, just believe in God, you're going to make it. Then the devils are going to be saved. Which is not biblical. Amen? Amen? Verse 20, but will thou, O vain man, that faith without works is dead. See, some say you just got to believe. You don't have to do anything. You don't need to be baptized. You don't feel, need to feel the Holy Ghost. You don't need to repent. But that's not what the Bible says. Because if your faith doesn't have works, it's dead. Was not Abraham, oh wow, he goes back to Abraham. Was not Abraham, our father, justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar. Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made complete or perfect. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. The friend of God. You see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. So you can't be saved just believing in a God that he exists. Amen? You got to do something. In Galatians 3, 1 talks about obeying the truth. The word believe comes from the Greek word pestio. To think to be true, to be persuaded, to accredit. To credit, place confidence in. An account means an actual account like a bank account. That it means actually that an account has been opened to you and deposited into it is righteousness. And just like it deals with facts, when you look at your bank account and it says you get a thousand dollars, it's fact. You can withdraw up to a thousand. Amen. And every time you believe God, God's depositing righteousness. Every time you believe him, even in the things that are impossible, there's righteousness. There's righteousness deposited. They put on Christ. You believe in God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ because it is God that works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure in the name of Jesus Christ. And so we've got to do some things. You just can't believe in your brain. You got to obey the truth. Amen? Believe in God. What did Abraham believe? He believed God. But what did he believe? Amen. He believed God promised him a son. At 75 years old, God said, you're going to have a son. 
He waited 25 years for the son to be born. And here we are. Sometimes we complain. Lord, it's too long. How long you waited? Oh, 25 minutes. Too long. He waited 25 years. Hallelujah. And this is what we believe in Hebrews eleven seventeen. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he, had, and he that had received the promises, offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up, even from the dead, from whence he also received him in a figure. It's amazing he uses the term, term terminology that God accounted unto him for righteousness. Abraham also saw it that God was able to raise Isaac up from the dead because he believed God. In his mind, there was no way this promise is going to remain dead. In his mind, God, I don't understand what you're telling me to do, but I'm going to obey you because you see, he already left everything. He already, that was way 25 years ago that he left everything. Amen. And in his mind, God who promised me a child, not any child, but a child, that in Isaac, the promise are going to be fulfilled and so there's no way even if I kill him there's no way he's going to die he cannot die that's what he believed that's what he believed and it was accounted to him for righteousness so when God told him kill that child he said alright I believe you you said he's going to have he's going he's gonna to have kids as, as many as the, the stars and, and the, 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 the seashore, the, the, the grain of sand on the shore. In his mind, he can't die. And so when, they, when Isaac was a little boy, you know, learning to walk, b- beside the campfire, he falls in. Ah, he's fine. Don't worry about it. He might be burned. Ah, he, he's okay. <laughs> he had no fear of his child. Dying, growing up, whatsoever. Somebody needs to receive that faith right now for you. If you got, if you're a parent, you're praying for your kids. Uh, would you believe that right now? You come from the lineage of. Abraham. You come from the lineage of Abraham. If God has given you a promise for your children, for your family, there's no way they're going to be lost. There's no way they're going to die. There's no way that the devil can do anything to them. God is faithful. Oh, somebody rejoice right now. Somebody believe if you're a parent, God's given you a promise. There's no way that the devil can harm them in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because we worry, right, parents? We worry. And your kids don't understand that because they're kids. But when they're parents, which they may not have a chance to be because God's coming soon, it's a great payback. (laughs) Praise God. All the attitudes, yeah, you just wait. Oh, yeah. I'll be home soon. Oh, yeah, you just wait. Praise God. And when I'm a grandfather, I'm like, yeah, see? Oh, yeah. Doesn't feel good, does it? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. But I could just imagine Abraham. Eh, don't worry about him. He's not going to die. Let's throw him in the Nile River and the crocodiles. He's not going to die. What an amazing faith. Oh, you think that's far-fetched? He raised that dagger to kill him. Oh, yeah. He, he was not like an act. Oh, you know, I know how we do it, right? Oh, I know you're telling me to do this, Lord. I'm giving $1,000. but I know you're going to give it back, right? And here it is, Lord. And you're waiting for him to say, ah, that's okay. You know, don't give it because now you've proven your faith, Right? He was ready. It says that he accounted that God was able to raise him up. So in his mind, he's dead. But God's so powerful, faithful is he who promised he's able to raise him up.
because he was dead bodily already. He was a hundred and hundred years old when he gave birth. Hallelujah. And what a relief for a parent to trusting God for what God has promised. What do you believe God for? Because all of us have promises. Amen. All of us as promises. Do not let the trials and difficulties of life snuff out your promises. Amen. Don't let the trials and difficulties and the time of waiting snuffed out your faith. You're just coming. You're barely making it. No, you're more than a conqueror through him. <laughs> no, you're guaranteed victory. Thanks be unto God who gives us the victory. But you, there's got to be some details to your promise. When God gives you a promise, you've got you to have a vision of how this promise is going to happen based on what he said. Hallelujah. And when you go through trials, notice and know that God is just strengthening you. Know that God is actually preparing you. So you could believe for more. How many of you want to believe for more? Yes. That the trying of your faith being much more precious than that of gold. Because we are in a day now that God is trying faiths. Yeah. Our belief in God. Not in what he can do, but in him. And he's, he's allowing. You, you, you talk about all the things that are happening in our society. God's allowing things to happen. And this is how Paul suggests to us to look at our trials in 2 Corinthians 4, verse 17. For our light affliction. Turn to somebody and tell them, it's not so bad. Don't make it about yourself. See, when you're going through something, you, you think like, God, I, I can't handle this. It's like, it's like the end of the world. What's happening? I got a little cold. Because, you know, guys especially, man, when they're sick, it's like the whole, not only the family knows, the whole block knows. Whole neighborhood, what's happening? What happened to dad? I just got a little sniffle. Got a little cold. I, I do that. I milk that puppy. Oh, yeah. Hey, can you bring me some soup? I can't get up. You bring the food at the bed. Look how bed it reclines. You know, can I put? Could you put a pillow to prop up my leg? You know, I need some paper towel. Can you, can you get some paper towel, please? Oh yeah, Father's Day is coming. I'm gonna melt that thing. <laughs> Praise God. But notice everything that Paul went through. He was beaten. He was left for dead. He was shipwrecked. He was bitten by a viper. I mean, all the Jews wanted to kill him. And he said, it's light. Like bud light that nobody's buying. Amen. Which is but for a moment. Worketh for us a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory. Well, we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things that are seen, they're temporary. But the things which are not seen, they're eternal. Hallelujah. They're eternal in Jesus' name. And you cannot live life uh, trying to make it pain-free as possible. You cannot be afraid of the trials of life. Uh, because if you do, if you make it heaven down here to the best of your ability. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 19, in this, If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. That's why the people that try to replace what God gives them with pleasure and lust and alcohol and the pursuit of things and achievement and work and all that, at the end of the day, they're just miserable. There's no joy in them. You mean I got to get up tomorrow to go to work? Yeah, having no work, how about that, you know? You mean I got, man, it's the same house I live in. Yeah, how about being homeless? You mean I got to work, I got to drive? How about have not, not having a car? You mean I got to get up? How about being bedridden? Hello, somebody. But see, if you have promises, 
that you can picture in your mind, then you're not miserable because your life transcends temporary things. The hardships of life, which is but for a moment, and they're light and they're temporary because you've got to have a vision. How many have promises from God? How many of you picture it in your mind? I've got promises from the Lord. You know, some say, well, I tried this prayer thing and it doesn't work. Well, I'm sorry for you. I don't know what to say. But mine works. If God doesn't play favorites, your prayer should work. Just as good as mine or anybody else's for that matter. Because prayer works. Amen. Prayer relieves you of the emotional stress and depression and the trials and the afflictions of life when you plug into the one who's eternal that could touch your feelings of infirmities and change your perception. He transcends your temporary life and you get a little taste of heaven. Then it changes. I love praying because I could feel, you know, some sort of way or down. And in about 15 minutes time, I'm like, praise God. Let's charge hell with a water pistol. Yeah, we're ready. My Lord, let, let's, let's, get, let's find us some devils. Let's beat them up. It's just, you know, just, I'm, I'm in the mood for fire. Come here. You know, you know what I'm talking about? If that's never been a reality for you, it should be. It's not the will of God for you to be depressed at all. At any moment. Yeah. Oh, Joseph was this depressed. He was serving. No, he wasn't. He might have been a little bit, but he didn't remain depressed. You know why? Because he served. People who are depressed don't serve. Amen? Like that dad that was sick, he didn't want to be served. He propped up in his bed and be served. Why? Because I'm sick. I'm hurting. Minister to me because I'm hurting. Not Paul. He was in jail. But he said, I long to be with you. I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. He wasn't thinking about himself. Why? Because he's attached to the eternal God, Jesus Christ, uh, that gives him peace, uh, that gives him joy. So in a prison cell, he said, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. He caught the amor soul. Wouldn't you want that kind of outlook, uh, that kind of experience, that when you're in pain, uh, that when you're going through trials, you see beyond it, uh, you see the promises of God, uh, and you can encourage somebody despite your pain. So Paul and Silas while in jail, they were not at the Marriott. They were not at a Car Rich Carlton, which I've never been in. They were not in Hawaii. Oh, I want to go there. Why? They look at each other. Paul and Silas in jail. Uh, they're fastened with, 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 with stocks and bonds, not the stock exchange, but it's, it's on their legs, it's on their wrists. And the Bible says at midnight hour when it was the darkest. See, when it's most bleak in your life, get ready. Jesus is about to show up. When you've tried everything, when you try to solve everything, and it doesn't work out. Oh, that's what he's been waiting for. That you're no longer reliant on yourself. But you've given up on yourself, on your ability. And you say, I trust him. I want him. And so Paul and Silas, at the midnight hour. Oh, the Bible doesn't waste words. You know, midnight, right? It's the darkest. It's the darkest. It's when thieves usually break in. Because usually people are asleep at midnight. Not at our house, but I'm pretty sure other houses. Amen. At midnight, instead of feeling sorry for themselves, they go, let's sing. See, if you can't sing here in this air-conditioned room with padded pews, yeah, I don't feel like singing today. Why? Because, I don't know, I just, you know, my, stub my toe.
they did not have an atmosphere conducive to singing. Because when you're in pain, you don't like to sing. Amen? When you're depressed, in, in the psalm says, we've hang our harps on the willow. But when you can transcend that because God has given you a promise, then you can sing. I don't know if Paul knows how to sing. Probably not. Most preachers, they don't know how to sing. Right? Even the people that do think they know how to sing, and they sing, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's keep that in the bathroom. <laughs> and Silas, I don't know, maybe Silas knows how to sing. I don't know. But here they are. Remember, if you read that story, they have open wounds in their back because not only were they thrown in jail, they were beaten in their backs. Like Jesus was beaten. So they had open wounds. And they was rubbing against that sanitized wall in that Mamertin prison because they have Lysol, you see. They clean that every day. And, and Paul said, you feel like singing? Silas so goes, nah. Paul gets, said, yeah, you do. Because somebody's going to encourage you, you see. And we encourage each other. Paul goes, all right, let's sing. What are we going to sing? I don't know. When the walls come tumbling down, I guess. Or, you know, Jesus take the wheel. I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. I think maybe it's something about prison opening or mountains crumble. Something like that, right? But their voice. Because see, he had a promise that he's going to preach to the Gentiles. He had a promise that God uh, was going to use him mightily. And if you're, it's not your time to die, you can't die. He was left for dead. They thought he was dead. And so, I don't know, uh, they just left him there, you know, good people. And he just comes back to life. Because it was not yet time to die. See, if God's not done with you yet, you can't die. I said, if God is not done with you yet, with the trials of life, don't get you saved. Because your trials just prepares you to the greatest trial, which is standing before the throne room, being judged, and having the confidence in the blood of the Lamb that, that covers you. And you say, yes, I'm guilty because the accuser will be there. But you said, you know, I am guilty. But then your attorney called Jesus Christ said, he is guilty, but I pay the price. I pardon him. He believed in me. So the psalmist began to sing, I shall live and not die and see the promises of God in the land of the living. I think that's what they sang. That's what Paul sang. Right? Oh, you're wrong, Pastor. Really? Where's your scripture? That's in Psalms. He knows Psalms. So he probably says, I shall, is that a song? I will live, not die, the rest of water. Yeah, something like that. Christ in me, I am free, in Jesus' name. I think they just sang that. I will live, I will not die, resurrection power. Then the earthquake came. The earthquake came. But they were in pain. These prisoners, these jailers beat them. And then the chief jailer wanted to kill himself, and he still wanted to serve. If that was you and I, yeah, kill yourself. You, you beat my back. Yeah, go ahead, bud. I'll watch you. And then I'll pray for you. Raise you from the dead. That's my thinking. Yeah, get a little taste of what you did for me. huh? How that sound? No, he's full of love. Oh, God. How many want that kind of love? You walk beside, you walk by somebody, feel the love of God. They, they're hurting. And you listen to them and you talk to them and you say, do you need the Lord? Do you need something? Can I do something for you? Because here's the truth. All of us have visions from God. All of us have promises from God. You know what's missing? 
the details of how it's going to happen. And so sometimes we forget the promises because we haven't put details. Can you stand? This is what God wants us to do. Those of you that have promises from God, would you come to the front? Because God wants you to envision with details how that promise is going to happen. And why is that important, Pastor? Because Proverbs 28, 29, rather, verse 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. If you cannot see the details of how God is going to fulfill the promises that he has given you, you're going to forget the promise. You're going to allow it to die. You're going to let your trials, your circumstances, to bury that promise. But those, especially today, that will envision through the help of the Holy Ghost, when that child's coming back, when that relationship's going to be mended, God is going to fulfill that promise. What's the word vision? It means revelation. It means a word. It means to behold. Perish means to go out of control, to run wild, to leave unattended. See, you know what kept Joseph believing? Because he rehearsed that in his mind, the vision that God gave him. One day, people are going to bow. He never forgot the dream. You know why you could conclude that? Because when he actually ministered in the baker and the butler, God began to interpret their dreams. He said, when you go before the king, don't forget about me. Because he, he believed that promise is going to happen. It doesn't matter how bleak the situation may be. If you get a vision from God, a word from God, a promise from God, and you envision the details, and God is going to add detail after detail, and it's going to keep you. See, you've got to have a picture of heaven. I think someone said that a few weeks ago. To go to heaven, you get a picture of it in your mind. You know why people go certain places to go vacation? Because they have a vision of how awesome that place would be. So they want to go there. You got to paint that picture in your mind. That vision, because where there's no vision, the people perish. That's how you grow. That's how we endure. Would you lift up your hands right now and would you let God remind you? of the promises that he has said over you. Would you even remind God, you said it to me, Lord. You said this to me, God. Now would you paint uh, details into it? Would you fill in uh, the missing pieces, oh God, of how this vision is going to happen, uh, how it's going to be fulfilled, oh God, uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't understand and I don't have the capability oh God to make it happen but I trust you just like Abraham did his promise is not going to die he said it's impossible for this promise to die because the promise came from heaven. The promise came from the one who gives life. The promise comes from the one who's all powerful, the only wise God. It doesn't matter how long it's going to take. If it's a promise from God, it's going to happen. It will not die. Just like it was impossible for Isaac to die. It was impossible for him to die before the fulfillment of the promise. Even so, your promises, they're impossible to die because it came from your father. It came from the one faithful as he who has promised. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, would you begin to believe God?
Would you just begin to believe God who made you that promise? In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Come on. Come on. Let him allow him to continue to paint the picture of the promise in your life. Your children are going to be saved. Your children are going to get reconciled. It's going to touch your body. You're going to be healed. Your time is not up yet. God wants to use you mightily. There are yet people that only you can reach. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Bible and the Word and the promises in the book, it's going to be fulfilled. The gifts of the Spirit are going to be prevalent in your life. It'll just be a byproduct. It's a sign that will follow you. Your shadow will heal people. You release the Word of God and hundreds and thousands are going to receive the Holy Ghost. He under the boko saye. He under the la bosoye. I will restore unto you what the canker worm has eaten, the locust, even my great army. I will restore it unto you because God is able to do that. He under the la 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 botori ande. He under the la la botori ande. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. What seemingly is lost, God is able to restore it. If you've been stolen from, if the enemy of your soul has stolen from you, you bring him before the righteous judge. And there is a law in the Old Testament if the thief is found to steal, he is required to pay back sevenfold. If you've been stolen from by the enemy of your soul, why don't you drag him before the righteous judge, Jesus Christ, right now? And the Bible, the law requires him to pay you back seven times with interest in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody begin to pray that right now. Somebody begin to pray that right now. Lord, your word says he's required to pay back seven times. In the name of Jesus. 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 Don't forget the details of the vision, the promises that God has given you. Rehearse it in your mind. Just like He commanded them to talk about one God when they wake up. When they rise up, when they sit, when they walk by the way, begin to think about the promises with the details that God has given you today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Would you find somebody to pray Bring with right now? Bring it all to peace. Would you encourage the somebody with your prayer right now? Me, let it Just break. like Paul and Silas sang together. At your name Would you find somebody? Still. Just like oh, Paul and had Silas. Still. Pray with the somebody. In, me to still. in the bleakest of Every night, you'll way. need that person. You'll need that brother. You'll need At that sister. Name, in the name Jesus, of Jesus. 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 You make the darkness I release the revelation Jesus, of the promise, Jesus, the fulfillment of that promise. Your promises never die. Jesus, In the name Jesus, of Jesus. 
Jesus. It's impossible you make for your the promises to die. Tremble. Jesus, Just like it was impossible for Isaac to die you before he was fulfilled. Jesus, your promises Jesus. from you. They live. You make the darkness they live. tremble. Jesus, it shall not Jesus. die. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, yeah. Jesus. You make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. You silence fear. I release the fulfillment of the promise. Jesus. You make the darkness tremble, Jesus, 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 Jesus. deny your name cannot be overcome your name is alive forever lifted high your name cannot be overcome your name is a light that the shadows can't deny your name cannot be overcome your name is alive forever lifted high your name cannot be overcome your name is a light that the shadows can't deny your name cannot be overcome your name is alive forever lifted high your name cannot be overcome your name is a light that the shadows can't deny your name cannot be overcome your name is alive forever lifted high your name cannot be overcome Jesus Jesus tremble Jesus Jesus you silence fear Jesus Jesus you make the 
Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus.